of pilots flying turbo supercharged equipped airplanes many tactical advantages over pilots flying airplanes not so equipped. The turbo supercharged airplane will outperform the unequipped airplane in almost every respect. It can take off with a greater margin of safety and with heavier loads. It can climb faster and higher. It can fly over bad weather and above the effective range of anti-aircraft fire. In many instances, our turbo supercharged bombers flying at high altitudes have outperformed many pursuit ships. The gain in fighting power made possible by the turbo supercharger will in many instances make the difference between a successful war mission and the death or capture by the enemy of yourself and your crew. The control of this bonus in power is simple but important and in order to make the best use of it the pilots must be thoroughly acquainted with its performance and know how it should be handled. In preparation for flight, the pilot first unlocks the flight control. The co-pilot turns on the master battery switch. The pilot checks to see that the throttles are closed and the supercharger controls are off. The co-pilot checks to see that the mixture controls are in the off position. The co-pilot receives the all-clear signal on number three engine, starts the fuel booster pump, and switches on number three magneto. Then the co-pilot starts the engine, and moves the mixture control to automatic rich to keep the engine running. When the oil pressure on number three is rising, the co-pilot receives the all-clear signal on number four engine. The co-pilot turns on fuel booster pump and switches the ignition to both, then he starts number four engine. He also moves the mixture control to automatic rich and signals when the oil pressure is okay. When starting engine number two, the pilot receives the signal from the mechanic and signals the co-pilot that number two is all clear. The co-pilot then turns on the fuel booster pump and switches on the ignition and starts number two engine. And number one is started in the same order. Engines are warmed up until the oil approaches normal temperature. Excessive ground running is undesirable as it may cause rapid burning of ignition wires, spark plug fouling, and overheating of cylinder head. The pilot moves the propeller controls to high RPM position. Ignition switches are checked at moderate power and with the turbo controls still in the off position. The co-pilot tries the left magneto and the right magneto individually to see that all spark plugs are in operation. This must be done quickly to prevent gases gathering in the exhaust stack and backfiring. Backfiring can cause serious damage to the nozzle box of the turbo supercharger. After calling the control tower on the radio, the pilot taxis to the takeoff position. Each engine is run up individually. The pilot opens the throttle fully and increases power by moving up the turbo supercharger regulator. If the turbo control travel was carefully pre-adjusted, this need not require further prolonged ground run-up. Moving up the regulator control causes the regulator to close the wastegate on the nozzle box of the turbo supercharger. This forces more of the hot exhaust gases out through the turbine wheel, causing it to speed up thereby causing more air to be fed to the engines. When desired takeoff manifold pressures have been reached, the pilot locks the turbo controls. He then closes the throttle. Note that he has left the turbo controls in the high boost position. This is done only in taking off and landing. At all other times, the turbo controls should be off before closing the throttles. And the throttle should always be open before the turbo controls are advanced.
Ready for takeoff, the pilot calls the control tower. Receiving his clearance, he slowly opens the throttles to the full position. The airplane picks up speed and takes off. When about 500 feet altitude is gained and the airplane has ample speed, the turbo regulator may be retarded. And if further reduction in power is desired, the throttle is retarded and engine speed reduced to desired cruising or cruising climb power. At the proper time as the objective is approached, following flight instructions, the pilot starts the plane climbing to higher altitudes. The co-pilot makes sure that the booster pumps are on and adjusts propeller pitch control to desired RPM. Then he opens the throttle to full open position. And the pilot sets the turbo regulator control to maintain required manifold pressure. As the airplane heads up into the rarefied atmosphere, the crew puts on their oxygen masks. As altitude increases, it is necessary for the pilot to occasionally adjust the turbo regulator in order to maintain desired manifold pressure, because the turbo becomes more efficient as the airplane climbs to higher levels. This is always done with the throttle fully open. Reaching about 25,000 feet, the possibility of interception and danger from anti-aircraft fire are greatly reduced. The pilot levels off and retards power until the airplane is flying at the best speed for bombing. The bombs are dropped and the airplane starts home. The pilot, warned of enemy fighters, increases the propeller speed to maximum allowable at the same time the co-pilot takes over the flight controls and climbs. The throttles are opened wide and the pilot then advances the turbo regulator control to give full military power. The big ship heads toward higher altitudes where it can outperform the enemy fighters. As the airplane passes approximately 27,000 feet, the pilot should retard the turbo supercharger control at a rate of about one inch of mercury manifold pressure per thousand feet of altitude. At about 30,000 feet, the pilot levels off. When he feels that it is safe to descend, he reduces power by retarding the turbo regulator and reducing engine speed to a lower RPM. To further reduce power, the pilot retards the turbo regulator. At the proper time, oxygen masks are removed. Co-pilot moves the mixture controls to automatic lean and switches off the fuel booster pumps. Nearing their base, the pilot opens the throttle and with engine set for maximum cruise RPM, sets the supercharger controls to obtain rated manifold pressure. This gives the pilot ample power to go around again an emergency should arise during the approach for landing. The wing flaps are lowered and the airplane rolls to a safe landing. Control of the turbo supercharger on pursuit type airplanes is much simpler since the throttle and turbo regulator may be combined. The pilot may then have only one power control to operate. It is still necessary that the pilot should reduce manifold pressures at altitudes above 25,000 feet to prevent seriously overspeeding the turbo supercharger wheel. The turbo supercharger will furnish a bonus in power at high altitudes. If you operate it properly during the many hours of normal service, it will respond in a life and death emergency, answering every demand you make on it and give you power over and above the best of our enemies. Ride this master of the skies to victory.